All right, 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter tonight. 2 Samuel, chapter number six. Just a few thoughts here we'd like to present for your consideration. Familiar account that I believe has been misapplied. Too many instances. So we can try to clear up some things tonight in the Word of God and take what God has for us. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse number 1. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from baal e of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments, made of fir wood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets and on cymbals. And when they came to Nashon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of of God. Before we give our title, we'd like to provide a little context, if we may. As, you, as we studied Uzzah, history allows us to know, and maybe this will cast what happened here in a little different light if we know this information, that Uzzah was a priest. History says he was a Levite. And one of the Bible encyclopedia says, one scholar says, the sin of Uzzah therefore was not as commonly represented. I think we all know the common representation of this story. It is not as commonly represented that of a layman or an unordained person presuming to encroach upon the office of the ministry or in other words as often applied that Uzzah touched something too hastily. It was a layman maybe putting his hand to something that he shouldn't be putting his hand to. And that is not the essence of this biblical account tonight. And it seemed like any time someone around the church is upsetting the apple cart, this seems to be about the first line of Scripture that people tend to go to. I remember even about a decade ago, there was some trouble in a location I was in, and I think it was the first Wednesday night service after the trouble that the minister turned to 2 Samuel chapter 6 and spent the entire message letting us know how you are not to touch something that you shouldn't touch, that if it's before God's order and before God's time, and certainly... There's many things to be said for those principles, but just not here. Seem like any time there is some sort of identifying of a problem between a lay person and a leadership, leadership tends to blame the lay person for being an Uzza. And that is not true. Uzzah was not a layman. Uzzah was a priest. And if there was anybody that ought to have known just how the ark of the Lord was to be transported, 
it was Uzzah. But I want to let you know that it was not just Uzzah responsible for the transporting of the ark, but it was all of the leaders involved, including David. And we'll show you by the word of God. In 2 Samuel verse, chapter 7, verse 1, it says, It came to pass, or I'm sorry, it can, if, uh, in previous chapters we learned that Abinadab was a Levite. His son Eleazar was consecrated to take the charge of the ark. We could read that over in 1 Samuel chapter 7. And Uzzah is related to these folks. But you must understand that not even Levites were supposed to touch the ark. Numbers chapter 4. You better be careful how you handle some things. Numbers chapter 4, verse number 15. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary, and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. So it wasn't just any Levite that was able to transport the ark, but it was a particular family, a particular family of the Levites that was tasked with bearing the ark of God. And they themselves were not even to touch it. They were only to bear it. Amen. So that lets us know that even if the children of Kohath, if their name, even if it wasn't Uzzah, if anybody had touched that ark, they would have died. To the office, verse 16, and to the office of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest pertaineth the oil for the light and the sweet incense. Let's skip down to verse number 19, verse 18. Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of the Kohathites from among the Levites, but thus do unto them that they may live and not die when they approach unto the most holy things. Aaron and his sons shall go in and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden, but they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered lest they die. So even when the ark of God was transported, it was not just visible. You were not able to just look at it. It was to be covered. There were to be veils covering that ark. And there were to be rods that, or staves that went through rings on the corner of the ark. Amen. So that the Kohathites, so that the Levites could pick it up and would never have to touch the ark. Uzzah knew this. As a Levite, he knew this. See, many times we feel kind of bad for Uzzah. He seemed like he had a good intention. He just wanted to reach forth, and I don't necessarily think Uzzah had a bad intention in reaching forth to touch the ark. But the issue was not so much his, in his intention. The issue was is that it should have never been there. Amen. That ark should have never been where it was. Why not a cart? Go with me to Numbers chapter 7. Why not a cart? And I want us to understand tonight that another word for cart in the Bible is wagon. It was like a wagon that they were using to transport the ark. Amen. And it seems to me that a wagon would probably have been more convenient than holding it on your shoulders. It was probably easier to have some oxen pull the wagon with the cart, with the, uh, with the ark in the cart, amen, than to bear the burden of carrying the ark. Numbers chapter 7, verse number 9. Study with me tonight. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear 
upon their shoulders. Their calling, their place in the kingdom, amen, was to bear the ark of the Lord upon their shoulders. They needed to feel the weight. They needed to feel the weight of handling the things of God. They needed to feel the weight of handling the articles of God. Amen. Within that ark symbolizes the mercy of God. You have the mercy seat. Amen. But you also have the law of God within that ark. You have God's justice. You have the very characteristics that make God who he is represented by that ark. Amen. The cherubims, amen, that came up over those ark, over that ark and touched each other. Amen. It's symbolic of the mercy of God and the justice of God touching one another. Amen. It was, a, it was to be, amen, a representative of the very dwelling place. Amen. The very seat of God. The manna, Aaron's rod, the table of stone. Amen. These were weighty matters. And God wanted the Levites, specifically the Kohathites, amen, to bear this burden upon their shoulders. First of all, we must understand tonight that not anyone can handle the Word of God. Not anyone, amen, is capable, amen, of bearing the burden of carrying the Word of God on their shoulders. God gave a specific call, amen, to specific ones and gave them a specific anointing for that specific task, which was to bear the ark of God on their shoulders. Second of all, those who do bear it must take heed to how they handle it. Amen, you must take heed to to how you handle it. Listen, if God wanted them to have a wagon, he would have given them a wagon. Amen. Go up with me to verse number 8. And four wagons, or four carts, and eight oxen, he gave unto the sons of Merari, according unto their service under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. To some, he gave wagons. He gave some carts, amen, to help him transport the other parts of the tabernacle. But you go to verse 9. But unto the sons of Kohath, he gave none. He didn't give them a wagon. He didn't give them a wagon, amen, because he didn't want them carrying the ark of God on a wagon. It wasn't supposed to be convenient, It wasn't supposed to be easy. It was supposed to be a burden. Amen. It was supposed to be a burden. Dear friend, tonight, amen, if you're going to be a minister of the Word of God, amen, of the kingdom of God, it's going to be a burden. It's going to be heavy. It's going, amen, to not always be convenient. And it's not always going to be easy. But your calling is to bear the burden of God. Our thought tonight, God won't ride your wagon. God won't ride your wagon. Amen. If God wanted them to have a wagon, he would have given them a wagon. Would have had some nice handles on it if he wanted it to be easy. Amen. If he wanted it to have been convenient, amen, he would have given them a nice cart, amen, and just slap that ark right on that cart, amen, and go your merry way. But God didn't give them a wagon. Amen. God said, I want you to feel, I want you to feel the burden of some things. I want you to feel the weight of some things. Amen. What, where did, first of all, where did they get the idea that they could transport the ark? In a wagon. Amen. I'll tell you where they got it from. They got it from the Philistines. They got it from the Philistines. When the Philistines took the ark, they didn't know what to do with it. They didn't have the law. They didn't have the word of God. Amen. And it it ended up being a, a terrible plague unto them. Amen. It caused distress. Amen. They just wanted to get rid of the thing after a while. Hey, this having this ark ain't that great after all. 
Amen. And they didn't know what they were doing. And so God didn't, amen, yes, he had their gods fall down and he smote the Philistines, but he held, he held it more severe against Uzzah and he held it more severe against David and he held it more severe against the Levites. Why? They either should have known better or they did know better than to do it that way. And I'm going to tell you tonight, the judgments of God are going to rest heaviest on those who should have known better or do know better. Amen. Listen. Amen. God nowhere changed his mind and said that you could transport the ark on a wagon or anywhere on any other type of device. He gave us the pattern. Amen. And saints of God, we have to follow that pattern to the T. Amen. We have to follow that standard to the T as we talked about on Sunday. We have to line ourselves up to the plumb line. Listen, if it was wrong a hundred years ago, it is still wrong tonight. Amen. If we blasted it a hundred years ago, then we should still be blasting it tonight. God has not changed his method. God has not changed his system. I believe if God blessed it then, he'll bless it now. Amen. If he cursed it then, I believe he curses it now. Amen. Amen. If they preached against the world 50 years ago, then we should still be preaching against the world. Amen. If they preached modesty a hundred years ago, then we should still be preaching modesty and living it, brother. And living it. Amen. People today are treating the word of God and the things of God too lightly. And I'll say minister and saint alike. Amen. They are treating the word of God and the things of God much too lightly. Amen. The very fact that you can just take the ark of God and put it on a wagon lets me know that you have taken the things of God too lightly. Amen. Some of the things that are flying today, some of the things that are being supported today, amen, and still being called Church of God, brother, I want to tell you it's too much lightness. Amen. There is not enough sobriety around the church today, and there is not enough sobriety in the ministry. Amen. People are treating the Word of God, the doctrines of God, the standards of God, the law of God, much too lightly. Much too lightly. Amen. They'll feel comfortable going anywhere they want to go. Amen. They feel comfortable wearing some things. Amen. That 50 years ago, amen, would have not had any place in a church of God congregation. Amen. People are allowing things into their homes today. Amen. That there was a time when the ministry would have put judgment on that thing. It's too light. It's too light. Amen. Too much looseness. Too much loose living. People are living as if, amen, God does not see what they are doing. Amen. They, we, dear one, we have to live as if Christ is right in our midst at all times. He sees our attitude. He sees our intentions. He sees our motives. Amen. He sees our thoughts. He sees our actions. Amen. We must take it seriously. Amen. There's too much lightness today among Church of God young people. There is too much lightness among Church of God young people. Amen. And you know what? The result of that is a light ministry. A light ministry will produce a light people. Amen. A light ministry will produce a light flock. Amen. An unsober ministry will produce an unsober people. Amen. I believe there's a lack of fear of the fear of God. Amen. There is a lack of the fear of God in the camp. Amen. There is a fear. There is an unhealthy fear of men. There is an unhealthy fear of people. And there is not enough of the fear of God among us today. Amen. If people feared God the way they ought, they wouldn't be living as loose as they are. Amen. They wouldn't be living as loose as they are. They wouldn't be so loose with their lips. Amen. They wouldn't be so loose. Amen. In the way they dress. They wouldn't be so loose with their attitude. Amen. They wouldn't be so loose in the places they go. They wouldn't be so loose in the way they entertain themselves. Amen. Amen. There's too much new stuff coming into the church today. Amen. And I'm not preaching be careful and I will never preach be careful with it. Amen. I'm not a be careful preacher. Amen. I will not preach you be careful with the world. Amen. I will not preach you better be careful. Amen. With Hollywood. Amen. I'm not going to preach. Amen. You be careful with the fashion trends and you be careful. Brother, there's some things we got to preach against. There are some things we got to preach against. 
Amen. And the reason why some things have gotten so close to the camp is because judgment hasn't been laid on some things like it ought. Amen. People trying to go for a more convenient way. Amen. They're trying to get the word of God and just slap it on a wagon and make any old thing do. Amen. There's a reason why. In some places they have let unqualified, unanointed, unsanctified men handle God's eternal word. Amen. Handle God's eternal word and we have the results to show for it. And we have the results to show for it, brother. Amen. When unsanctified and unanointed men are handling the word of God, amen, it produces something in the camp. Amen. You are the direct result of what you are fed. You are the direct result, amen, of what gospel is preached unto you. Amen. If you're preached a compromised gospel, you're going to have a compromised people. Amen. If you preach a watered down message, you're going to have a watered down people. If you preach a faithless message, you're going to have a faithless, uh, a faithless flock. Amen. If the minister's not sanctified, then you're going to have a carnal congregation, brother. Amen. We need to get some ministers today that have respect for the word of God. Amen. Have the fear of God among them. Amen. And we'll get back to the blessed old Bible. Amen. And get the ark off the wagon. And get some priests that will bear the burden. That will bear the burden, brother. Amen. Listen, there's too much fly-by ministering. There's too much fly-by ministering. Amen. Trying to, trying to pastor on the run. Trying to minister on the run. Amen. Listen, you got to bear the burden. you got to bear the burden of the church. Amen. Not just of the local congregation, but the influence of the church of God at large rests on the ministry shoulders. God needs men who will carry it. Men who can feel the weight of it. Men who can feel the weight, amen, of handling the word of God. The word of God is to be handled with sobriety. Amen. Uzzah should have known better. Many times we teach it as an example of someone touching something and then it just got all out of order. Brother, that is not rightly dividing the word of God tonight. And I, I appreciate if there's been good men of God that have taught it that way. Amen. I'm not disparaging them that, uh, tonight, but that's not what the word of God is saying here. Amen. This is not about someone touching something they shouldn't have touched and then it went all out of order. Brother, it was already out of order. It was out of order from the start. Why? Because the ministry was out of order. Because the ministry, because Uzzah, because the Levites had it out of order, it ended up that way. That was the result of it. This right here in 2 Samuel chapter 6, this is a ministry out of order. But you know what? When things, the ministry gets it all out of order. And then when something bad happens, they want to blame the lay person. Well, they shouldn't have touched it. Touching it wasn't the problem. You shouldn't have slapped the ark of God on a wagon. Because you didn't want to bear the burden of it. Because you didn't want to feel the weight of it. Listen, I'll let you know, God will strike you down every time you do stuff like that. Amen. God, the you're going to provoke the judgments of God. Amen. Maybe, maybe us a, to a degree, unfortunately, a well-intentioned, probably a, overall a good man, suffered, suffered unnecessarily. Because the ministry didn't bear this burden. Amen. Because they didn't handle this thing right. Stop blaming the laity when you're doing new stuff. Don't blame the laity when you're doing new stuff and it's not working. Too many ministers today will not take responsibility, but will play the blame game. Somehow their congregation is a wreck. There's messes here. There's messes there. There's question marks here. There's soul suffering here. Amen. And somehow it's everybody else's fault but theirs. Let's go back to 2 Samuel, please. God, listen, you're not shoving God up on your wagon. And you're not going to just make any old thing work. God's not going to write it. God's not going to write on your wagon. 
God's not going to ride on your wagon. You're going to do this thing right or he's not blessing you. Amen. You're going to do this thing right or you're going to suffer the judgments of God. Amen. And I'll say tonight, amen, there are some tonight that are provoking the judgments of God because they will not bear the burden how they're supposed to bear it. And they're the Uzza. And they're the Uzza. And they're going to end up touching something that they should have never touched. Amen. See, listen, when you don't do it right from the start, eventually you've got to touch it. You got to touch it. Why? That oxen starts shaking. Things start getting a little shaky. Things start getting a little out of, oh, this is a little beyond my control now. Let me just do something real quick. Ah, you shouldn't have touched that. Ministry. You talk about leaving it in God's hands until your ark starts rattling on your new cart. And all of a sudden, you got to make some phone calls. All of a sudden, now you got to make some, hold some sessions. Amen. All of a sudden. Amen. You got to start, amen, making sure you're working some things out behind the scenes. Brother, you shouldn't be touching that. That's not for you to touch. You don't touch the holy things of God. Amen. You don't say something is of God when it's not of God. Amen. You don't say something's of God when it's not of God. Don't tell me God says it's okay with it being on a cart. Don't tell me it's okay. That, tell me that God's okay with it being on a wagon. When you're supposed to be bearing the burden. You have to bear the burden of it. You have to get up under the weight of it. Disorder is the result of a disorderly ministry. Amen. This was not about bad timing. That's another, that's another, when I, I hear this account, it's always about just bad timing. People just don't have good, listen, somehow it's never good timing to blame the ministry. Until disaster strikes. Amen. Getting out of order. Amen. This was out of order. You want to talk about things out of protocol. If you had borne the burden the way you were supposed to, amen, you wouldn't have had to step out of protocol and touch the ark. Ministers today, they don't want to follow God's protocol, but get upset and blame catastrophic events on a lack of protocol. Listen, a new cart ministry does new things. A new cart ministry, a new wagon ministry, they'll start doing things you've never seen before. They'll start doing things that you've never even heard of before. You ask people been around the church, you ever seen this before? You ever seen this done like that? No, brother so-and-so used to do it this way. Brother sister so-and-so. Listen, a new cart ministry will do new things. They'll do new things. Do things that were never done before. And I'll tell you what, they'll, they won't get the glory just like they, they will not get the glory. They won't get the glory. And when they do touch something, it just ends up disaster. I know ministers today, everything they touch, it's just been a disaster. Absolute disaster. Seems like every time they get involved, it goes from bad to worse. Things are bad, so people call their ministry, hoping it will get better. After a call to the ministry, and it goes from bad to really bad. It goes from mess to bigger mess. You know why? Because they're not bearing the burden. They're trying to do things by convenience. They're trying to throw things on the wagon and just let the oxen push it. Brother, that's not how you handle the things of God. You better handle it with a burden. Yes, you better handle it with a burden. Amen. Amen. We need ministers that can handle situations out of a motivated burden. Uh, out of a burden that motivates. This was a Levite who touched something because things were out of order from the beginning. If you start off wrong, if you start off wrong, amen, you're going to end up wrong. When you don't handle the word of God correctly, when you don't deal with matters correctly, somewhere you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to put your hand to it somewhere. You're going to have to touch something you shouldn't have touched. And the outcomes are often much more severe than intended. Due to, uh, Uzzah could have lived... Deuteronomy 17. Unfortunately, he died. But had things been handled in the right way, this should have never occurred. See, listen. There's some things that happen that should have never even got where it got. If things had been handled properly from the beginning... You wouldn't have it where it is now. If that, if those Levites would have just bore the ark the way they, we wouldn't even know about Uzzah. 
This case wouldn't even be in the Bible. And then David has the nerve to be all offended. He's all upset at God, amen, because you see, you unjustly, you unjustly killed Uzzah. God didn't do anything unjust. There was nothing unjust about it. Y'all should have known better. Y'all should have known better. And I want to say God's going to hold some Church of God ministers and some Church of God congregations responsible because they should have known better. And don't turn around and call God unjust. Amen. And don't turn around and blame everybody and their mother. Amen. And not point the finger where it really goes to the leadership. Deuteronomy 17, verse number 15. Thou shalt in any wise, any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Listen, I believe it was always God's will for Israel to at some point have a king. I think Deuteronomy makes that very clear. But it was to be the king that God chose. They got in trouble with Saul because they wanted a king. They felt it was time for a king. They wanted to be like the other nations. And so God said, fine, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. And after Samuel went and told him what a terrible idea, what a terrible prospect this was, they said, well, we hear you, but we still want a king. See how that turned out. But he said, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among thy brethren. Shalt thou set king over thee, Thou mayest not set a stranger. Don't get some new stuff up in here. Amen, Church of God congregation. You're going down to Babylon trying to find a pastor. Amen, not so. You get someone who you know. The Bible says find a man out of your own coast. Amen. Why? Because so you know him. You know the rapport. You know the testimony. You know the spirit. Amen. You know the clarity. Amen. Too many people don't know what they're getting. Or they do know what they're getting. They put them up anyway. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. All right. So he says, listen, when you get a king that I choose, set him over thee. What's going to happen here? Verse number 18. It shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and the Levites. What was the king supposed to do? I'm not sure if this ever actually happened with any king in the history of Israel. But the standard was that the king was to take the book of the law and know it just as well as the priests. He was to copy out of the law that was given to the Levites. He was to know it just like them. Amen. He was to know it just like this. You get a man that knows the book to lead you. Amen. You get a man that is in the book. You get a man that is studied. Amen. That is, amen, on the same page as the priest. Amen. That he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and the Levites. And it shall be with him. And he shall read therein all the days of his life. He doesn't reach a point where he can just kind of, you know, go by and, amen, just crew. He knows the Bible pretty well. He can just kind of put something together and this will work and, amen. No, you carry that book with you. You get your nose in that book. You read it all the days of your life. That he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, what does this tell me? In the situation with Uzzah, David should have known better. David also should have known better. You're the king, David. The new cart shows the catastrophic results of unnecessary things happen when you pull out the new cart. It's not so much that Uzzah touched, that he touched the ark. Yes, the Bible says if he touched it, they would die. But the deeper sense in this is why he had to touch the ark. Why he had to touch the ark. Because when things got shaky, it says as the oxen 
went over the threshing floor. The ark, uh, the cart began to shake. And, the, and Uzzah began to look at the ark and he got worried about it. And then he, at, probably at an impulse, just tried to steady it real quick. And he died for his error. As well-intentioned, as pure as his motives might have been, God judged him. God judged him severely. First Chronicles 15. We're going to close here. First Chronicles 15. God's not riding your wagon. You better get under the burden. You better get a real burden. First Chronicles 15. Now I think the one thing that I admire about David is that he was willing to acknowledge the error and he was also willing to correct it. And listen, I believe there is some leeway for leadership to make some mistakes along the way. David should have handled this better. But you know one thing David didn't do? Make the same mistake again. It is one thing to make a mistake. And it is another thing to do the same thing over and over and over again. Too many ministers, amen, instead of owning to the mistake initially, will keep perpetuating the same one because their pride stands in their way. Verse number one. And David made him houses in the city of David. And he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. This time, David said, listen, we're going to do this thing. We're going to get the ark of God where it goes. But we're going to do this thing right. We're going to make the necessary preparations. He built a tent for the ark of God to rest. He prepared. Then David said, listen, listen to what David said. None, oh, you got it right this time, David. None ought to carry the ark of God. I didn't hear, I didn't hear anything about it riding on anything. They didn't go and try to bring the wagon back out. They didn't get a new model. They didn't get a more secure cart. He said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. We're going to get this thing in order. We're going to get this thing in order. I'm not trying to go get a, the, a, another, another cart. I'm not going to try to fasten it a little better. Than, no, 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 no. We're going to get under the burden of this thing. We're going to get the Levites situated. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. Listen, we're getting the men that God hath chosen to carry the burden of this thing. We need the men that God has chosen. There is too much influence of men concerning who bears the ark of God. We need the men that God has chosen, whether you like it or not. You may not particularly care for the Kohathites, but that's who God's chosen. That's who God has chosen. We can go a whole long way with that, but we're going to leave it right there. David said, listen, I'm not making the same mistake again. I might have let the cart function last time, but listen, the cart been retired. As far as carrying the things of God, that thing is out of commission. Amen, that's out of commission. He said, listen, I'm going to learn from this. It's going to be done right. It's going to be handled right. And it's going to be completely right. Amen, we're not trying to do this more conveniently. I don't care if the Philistines got away with it. We know better. Amen, I don't care if another congregation does it. I don't care if another group does it that way. 
We're going to get back to the blessed old Bible. Amen. We're going to get, I don't care if that, amen, if that's what they did, amen. Maybe they got away with it 40 years ago. I don't know. But if I find it in the book, remember Josiah? When they found the book of the law, amen, they dusted it off somewhere, amen, and he read it. And when Josiah read it, he said, oh, Lord, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. Listen, I believe it. He started, man, listen, we preach the word of God like it's supposed to be preached, amen. Many people realize we're in more trouble than we think we are. Amen. What happened? They had a revival. He said, listen, everything in this book we're going to do. Everything in this book we're going to do. Amen. I believe they celebrated the Passover that, and they said that hadn't been done in years. Hadn't been done in years. Amen. He said, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do it right. He said, none, none ought to carry. Not just anyone going to handle this thing. Amen. This thing is going to be carried. We're going to feel the weight of it. And we are going to use who God has chosen and how he has chosen it. Amen. And God still has requirements just the same today. Verse number 11. And David called and then he went through. Amen. And he began to sanctify the Levites. And David, verse 11. And David called Zadok and Abiathar the priests. And for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, and Joel, and Shemaiah, and Iliel, and Amenadab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Get yourselves in order. Both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. Prepare yourselves. We're not taking it just any old way. For because ye did it not at the first, doesn't mean we're going to do it again. Amen. The Lord our God made a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves. They set themselves apart for the work to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. In verse number 15, and the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves. Oh, look what they found. There they are. We found the staves. Amen. You slide them, I mean, just as smooth as ever, right through those rings. You get the Levites who are sanctified, set apart for the work. Amen. Ready to bear the ark of God, to handle it with sobriety. You didn't just look lightly upon that thing. They had it nice and covered. Amen. These are the holy things of God. You don't just touch the things of God. You don't just, amen, no fleshly, no fleshly hands are just to be touching the things of God. You get a sanctified priest. You get a sanctified Levite. Amen. And even then, they don't just handle it any type of way. Amen. You put it on your shoulders and you, you feel, you feel the weight of it. Amen. Every step you take, you feel it. Every move you make, you feel it. You don't just make a move. You don't just make a random move. You don't just make a random... No, you feel the weight of that thing. Let me just read a few verses and we're done. And... David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers. Oh, then everybody got in order. I mean, you got the Levites in order, we get the singers in order. With instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed him and the son of Joel. Amen. And they just kept, uh, they, they got everybody situated. They got their singers in order. They got the play, players of music in order. Amen. They had their songs and they were instructed about the song. They understood what the song was about. Amen. Then they had doorkeepers and they put everybody in their place when they got the Levites in their place. Verse 25, so David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen and all the Levites that bear the ark and the singers and Shenaniah, the master of the song, with the singers. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting, and with sound of the cornet, and with trumpets, and with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out a window, 
saw King David dancing and playing. She despised him in her heart. Not everybody going to rejoice with you. Not everybody going to rejoice with you. But listen. God is only going to bless when it's done his way. You cannot take the things of God and handle them for convenience sake or whatever the reason, just any way you want to. Amen. The Levites had to be sanctified. They had to be in order. And listen, every other position got right in order. Got where it needed to be and the glory fell. Then they had something to shout about. Amen. Then they, had, then they could have a camp meeting. Listen, I believe someplace they stop having revivals. Stop having camp. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. You all need a congregational revival. You all need a revival down in your prayer closet before you try having to try and have a revival. Get your ministry in order. Right. Amen. Amen. Get a ministry that gets straightened out before God and they can feel the burden of it before you have them up behind the pulpit. True. Amen. It's time to clean the house. Amen. From the pulpit to the pew, brother. Amen. Get the door. You'll get the doorkeeper and the singers and the choir and everything else in order. When you get the Levites in order, when you get the Levites in order, God's not riding your wagon. God is not riding your wagon. Amen. So you might as well pitch the wagon and get under the burden. Amen. And carry the, carry the burden of it as God intends. May God bless you tonight.